Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'm very sorry that I can't stand up and address you all and give you a lecture because uh, last September I uh, injured my leg and up to now I haven't recovered, so I can't stand too long and nor I can sit too long. So that's why I have to sit down initially to talk to you. Uh, I am a construction engineer, but specialized in Jordan field, particularly in deep foundation, supporting skyscrapers, high-rise buildings, civil structures, a port, an airport. Uh, I'm very happy that I think. Nearly all the boys and girls uh, come from the science stream. I welcome you to this Asia Science Camp 2016. I am the chairman of the steering committee organizing this particular science camp in this campus. Uh, I'm very glad that you are the science stream. Uh, I hope that you can continue after graduation from the high school, you can continue to pursue into the science subject, to study on the science subject. I'd like just to mention that perhaps uh, you know about this. Learning science, like what you are learning, is not just to acquire science knowledge. But learning science will help you to develop your analytical capability and capacity, enhance your logical thinking skill, as well as strengthening your imaginative power. And these three skills are important attributes to the success, whether in your career either in science or non-science field. Whether you become an engineer later on, or a scientist, or you turn yourself into a businessman. More importantly, these three skills are the essential characteristics of an inventor or innovator. I always advocate the importance of cultivating science competency and innovative mindset while young. And I'm extremely happy that today there's widespread agreement that the condition for facilitating science competency and nurturing innovative mindset must be developed in primary and secondary school. Let's take a look at the age people are most productive in innovation and scientific breakthrough. Newton discovered the law of universal gravitation at the age of 25. Yang Zhenling or Franklin Yang became Nobel laureate at the age of 35. Even though Gao Kun, sometimes we call him father of optic fiber, obtained his Nobel laureate at the age of 76. But the Nobel Prize is based on his work on optic fiber at the age of 27 when he was working for GE in London. Today, about 50% of the Nobel laureate in science win their prize at the age below 55 at about 20% below 45. According to a Benjamin survey, every age that Nobel laureate performed their prize winning work and inventors had their great achievement is 39. The largest mass of great innovation are at the age of 30s. 
is about 42%, and a substantial amount are in the 40s, 30%, and only a 14% beyond the age of 50. Based on an ordinary group of inventors, it was found that the mean age in which they found their first pattern was 31. In fact, myself, most of my engineering innovation and invention were also evolved around the age of 30 to 40. For the scientists or the innovators to achieve at such a young age, their innovation mindset certainly must be cultivated from young. Older people are often less innovative because they tend to rely on their experience to solve a problem or learn it from somewhere. If the, the, the solution may not be perfect, they may also be too busy. By then, I think they, they will. They'll be married or they are holding a higher position. They'll be too busy with the family or with the business and have no time to innovate for a better solution. Excuse me, how to get this off? Huh? Over the last, uh, I think you all have been listening to eight lectures, including uh, two keynote speech. Um, today, I just want to share with you uh, some lighter things. I will uh, tell you about some of the story, story on my creative ideas during the childhood and school days and how it led to make of my many innovative engineering design and method for construction or products in my career life later. I am not as lucky as in, as many of you because at Four years old, my mother fell sick and was bedridden until eight years old, she passed away. And at 12 years old, my father suffered a major stroke and bedridden and she, he passed away when I'm 16 years old, when I'm in the high school. So my family, when I'm small, it's quite poor. So I have to create my own toys. I don't have money to buy toys, I have to create my own toys. And uh, I catch wooden bees. Uh, wooden bees, they always try to drill a hole in a, a piece of wood. You can just take a bottle and catch a bee and tie it with a string and let it loose and follow the bee to see what they do in the morning, in the evening, let them come back, I'll go there again tomorrow, I hang the uh, thread there. And uh, catch birds. I remember some time back, I went to, uh, with Professor Lee, the organizing chairman for ASC, to give a talk to the school. He told me that he catch bird by feeding the bird with a break soup in the whiskey so that he get the bird drunk and, and catch the bird. But I, I catch the bird through mechanical means. Hey, there's no voice. Anyway. So what I do is uh, I use a 
and let the string loose. From primary school to university, I have many creative ideas. I just pick four, one from primary school, one in the junior high school, and uh, one in the senior high school, and one in the university. Uh, when I'm primary five, it's about 11 years old. Uh, my senior in primary six, my senior, he's very good in playing uh, the bamboo flute, or in Chinese it's called Dizhi. I, I love the Dizhi music. Dizhi actually got uh, one blowing hose, one membrane hose, and six finger hole, and two sound hole and behind the sound hole sometimes they put another two hole for decorative hanging decorative thing uh, as i told you i'm quite poor my family quite poor even though i very much like to have uh, a fruit uh, but i don't have money to purchase so i try to make a fruit myself So, I went to the, I went to the nearby jungle and cut a piece of bamboo. I improvised by using, because I don't have any high speed drill or carving tools. So I improvised by using a red hot three inch nail heated in the stool to reel the hole for a self make the teeth. This is how I burn it and put the pressure onto it. I was, uh, my father saw me doing this, he was highly praised, he praised me, and he helped me to complete the thing. If I do it myself, probably it will take a few days, I don't have such a strength to put a, such a strong pressure to do it through. In the junior middle two, you know, in the Chinese high school here, we call junior middle two, is equivalent to second year lower secondary. I was inspired by using, I was inspired by the Timmer's paper to test the acidity and alkaline. So I used, I, I plucked out some uh, hibiscus flower and boy to make the flower water, which is red in color, and I soak some ash, wooden ash, in water, let it settle overnight, and then form the alkaline water, and pour out the clear alkaline water, and I squeeze some lime into the water, and let it settle over the night, and make the lime water as an acidic water. When I add flower water into the, uh, when I add the ash water into the flower water, it will turn into green, but not blue like the litmus paper. And when I add the lime water, it will turn back to a slight, uh, slightly uh, pink type of uh, red. I pack it, I call this a magic water. I pack it in three bottles and sell it to the Kampong boy. Kampong boy is a village boy for, her, for my own pocket money. In my 
in my school, in the, my senior high school, we have to write an essay, a weekly essay, every uh, weekend and pass it up on Monday. And any topic that we choose to write. After writing many weeks, that we uh, run out of topics to write, I was looking out from my room through the window. I saw some chicken playing around there. Then suddenly something struck me. I find that the rooster is prettier than the hen. And I remember when I catch the fighting fish, the betta fish in the river, as a boy we like to catch this fighting fish, and the, the male, there's a red color one, is much prettier than the female. Same thing, in the zoo, you can see the peacock is prettier than the big hen. And the male line is prettier than female line. I, based on this observation, I concluded Boys are prettier than girls. Of course, I offended all the girls in the class. I offended all the girls in the class with the exception of the lady class monitor. And uh, I want her sweetheart. She become my wife. She is standing, she is still there. Do you understand? Yeah. Do you understand? So one day he came and looked me up and said, Can we join you write a book on men are prettier than women, boys are prettier than girls? And he came up with a lot of quite a number of ideas. And one of the things is this he said, Men seldom use cosmetic. Women only use cosmetic, a lot of cosmetic. But uh, the girls here, do you agree? Or not? Boys are prettier than girls. Now, if you don't agree, it is in my essay. I read an essay on this topic. But if you don't agree, perhaps you look. Perhaps you will be a bias, you know, because we are human beings. Uh, we are we are human beings. We are part of the animal kingdom. We are human beings. And if you don't agree, if you, if you don't agree, probably you are biased. And if a dog, dog, look at a boy and a girl, I think the, the dog will say, boys are prettier than girls. In my last year in the university, at the beginning of my last year, uh, my dear professor, teaching me on soil mechanics and structures. Professor Chin Pangki, he's one of the top engineers in our country. The Penang Bridge, if you, have, you all have been to Penang, the first Penang Bridge was designed by him. The crosses the, the sea is designed by him. He, he taught us uh, the column analog method. And 
uh, in the early 60s and 70s, we don't have computer as common as what we are now, um, as powerful that we can calculate using simulation and things like that. So we use a column analog method for designing to calculate the bending moment uh, when you are designing a beam, a non-uniform beam, to calculate the bending moment and shear force. But uh, the original formula for uh, developed to using the column analog method uh, can only solve simply supported beam. Uh, uh, one span simply supported beam. Simply supported beam is you just sit the beam on top of the support. It's not connected. Uh, it's just sit on it. So it's called simply supported. And uh, Professor Jin extend it to cover, extend the, the, the method to cover a portal frame with a fixed end. In that lecture, he, he put a challenge to all of us in the, in the, in the class and said, boys, can you think, go back and think hard and see whether you can extend it further to cover the multiple span, beams or portal frames. Uh, I went back to where I'm staying. You know, we boys, we don't wash our clothes every day. We accumulate until we are running out of clothes to wear. We accumulate, so that day is my washing day to wash and go. I went to the, the bedroom, uh, the, the bathroom, and started washing. The you, while during washing the clothes, suddenly some idea struck me. I think it is way to extend this theory of or the column analog method to cover the multiple span. I left half the, the clothes unwashed. I ran back to my bedroom and start working on it from three o'clock in the afternoon until when I come I get the, some answer out at about 12 something midnight and I, I start writing down the equations and sit down and do some example of how to solve this problem by then it's about 4 o'clock in the morning Prof Chin went to the university for work very early he always did uh, reached the university at about 5.30 to 6 in the morning. So I, since I cannot sleep, I also went down to the university that morning, very early in the morning, and sit down in the apron outside his room to wait for him. When, when Prof Jin came in, he thought, because one night I didn't sleep, so my, my face was pretty pale. So he thought, I must have some problem, you know? or I'm sick. So he said, well, what happened to you? I said, no, sir. I'm, I said, I have discovered a way to extend the column analog method. So he said, come in, come into my room. Don't worry, sit down. So he always carry a, a can of, we call Owatin, or now called Milo. It's a chocolate a ring, and he bought a cup of tea. He said, don't worry, you drink the thing. I, I'll read to when I pass him the, the calculation and the calculation, I pass it to him. He said, I'll read through it. He go through it. He said, well done, boy. And that afternoon, we have the class, the structural class. He came into the class. He declared to the class that I have made that achievement and, and walk me with an acorn room for me to do my thesis project until, uh, you know, acorn room, it's very pretty. You see, we, we, we only have aircon room for us to study is in the library. So most of our room in the hostel at the, in the in the 60 and 70 we don't have air condition. So he gave me an aircon room for my sole use until end of the year, until I finish my study. That's what the four uh, examples of my of course and many other things. For example, I challenge the biology teacher, he gave me a simple uh, thing like, for example, apes turn, you know, 
know, we evolve from apes. We human beings evolve from apes. I put up my hand, I said, sir. That is in the high school. I said, sir, I don't quite agree with you. He said, why you, you don't agree? I said, time is continuous, right? He said, yes, time is continuous. I said, if time is continuous, if there's a first ape turned into a man, why shouldn't be a second ape? Why are we not seeing the ape now turning into a man? Now, I am not a biologist, right? That, that's a, when I was a boy, I was very curious. When he told me, ape evolved into a man, it's just simple. It, it, it's very so simple. So I said, no, I, I don't quite believe what you say. After I'm successful in my career, I begin to realize that my those younger days experience have to move my innovative mindset and have to ele elevate my innovation wisdom, establish my innovation capability and capacity, arouse my interest in innovation, but most important made me realize innovation have good value. This helped to develop me to become an innovative engineer and technopreneur in my career days. Let me just share with you some of my innovative engineering design and method of construction and product. These are some of the uh, innovative design or method of construction of products. Uh, in fact, I've just shown you a few examples, but uh, I have probably have 30 or 40 of them. But some are patented, some are not. Uh, some of the things I think better it, uh, just like the step wall path. I didn't better it because I immediately after I developed this method, a new way of forming the wall path. I managed to apply into a job. So I tender a job which I make about five million. Five million ringgit in the early days quite a big sum of money. So I said instead of patterning it, I can't go and apply into the job, I might as well earn the money first. So this is why I decided. And I also realized that even though I did better it, but I can enjoy a few years because no nobody dare to very quickly to copy and use it. You know? this, this this is a design now of a, a approach. Uh, some of the story I want to tell you are related to parling. And some of you may not fully understand what was piling. Piling is a deep foundation to support. Just now I mentioned the high-rise building or superstructures, and a pile is a post installed vertically into the ground, whether it's in the seabed or in the soft ground, to support the foundation for the super of a superstructure, whether it's building, factory, or infrastructure such as bridge, dam, and others. Now, how can basically divide into three types? First type is the driven preform path. Preform path meaning is you cast it first, you develop the path first before you install it to the ground. And, and the, the preform path are for the light load one, light load, uh, supporting the light structures, can support 50, 20, or 30 tons per power, it's stable power. Then you have the precast reinforced concrete power. Spun power actually is a precast, it's also a precast concrete power, but it's, it's uh, manufactured in a different way. Like not like conventional uh, precast concrete power, you just cast the thing in a bowl cast the power in the bowl. Whereas this one, you spin the concrete. So, so the, it's normally it's circular, and the, the, this, uh, there's a hollow hole uh, 
follow call in, in the center. Others are each section type of uh, steel palm or circular type of uh, steel pipe palm. These are uh, common preform, uh, driven preform palm. Uh, the second major one is the, this uh, uh, A and B is the two major one. Huh? Second major one is cast in situ palm. It means you cast a complete in situ. And these are the ball palms, ballet palms, and root palms. Uh, the second type, the cast in situ palm, have a higher supporting capacity. The steel palm, spun palm, RC palm can carry the most, is, the maximum is 100 tons or 150 tons per palm. Whereas ball palm or ballet palm can carry up to 1,000 tons per palm. Or root palm. Root palm is, is a mini palm, normally used for underpinning when a building is in trouble, settling, you can go in and use a root palm to underpin it to support it. The last one is the composite palm. It's normally developed by some partner company combining some of the techniques of the either the type A driven preform palm or the uh, type B the core cousin to palm. West Palm from London, Frankie Palm, you drive a team in to the end, you see put a plug below it and drive the team in and pour the company in subsequently. Positive palm, positive palm is It's developed in Malaysia by Dr. Wong from uh, one of the subsidiary companies of Samravi uh, Berhan. Frictionless ball bar. Frictionless ball bar is developed by me uh, in one of the project. We use it in one of the project. Uh, I also I'd like to explain to you a bit how the palm support the load. Actually, the palm support the load by two components. One we call the skin friction or sharp friction. Palm sharp. Palm we call sharp or sharp, sharp friction. And skin friction is the frictional resistance of the palm when you push the, when you load the palm into, put the palm into the ground, when you load it, is the side friction that holds the palm. Sorry. Uh, the other component is the end bearing. M bearing is at the end of the part, is support up, is an uh, M bearing. In 1976, is three years after my graduation as a young engineer. Uh, this project is project, I first time use my innovative idea to win the project. Uh, this Hong Kong Bank building, for those in Malaysia, probably you know where Hong Kong Bank is. It's, it's, it's uh, near the Wu Market, uh, beside the, the Grand River. Uh, the project is for the construction of a ball power foundation and ship power cover them. Ship power cover them is using the ship power as a retaining wall and close the four side when for uh, the construction of basement. The client, I don't know, uh, the client, Hong Kong Bank, I don't know he listened to who, he 
before he called the tender, he bought up all the ship power from Japan and buy the heaviest FSB 5L. He ordered it and bought it. So he tendered, so he called the tender before he bought the, this, this uh, power before calling the tender. Now, the soil formation. The soil formation is uh, what we in Malaysia we call it canary formation. Canary formation is the sedimentary rock formation consists of shale, sandstone, and uh, this uh, seas. Uh, it's a very common uh, soil formation in Kuala Lumpur. It cover the whole Kuala Lumpur, I think about more than 50% of the Kuala Lumpur area uh, in uh, this uh, Kenyu formation. Kenyu formation, some have a very deep weathered, uh, 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 this uh, weathered sandstone or weathered uh, shale, but sometimes the same stone bedrock or the seal are quite high up. So in this case, it's quite high up. And this side is near the river side. So you want to dig the basement, you can do the retaining wall or the cover dam. And because below the basement level is the wetted sandstone, it is near to impossible to drive in the steel edge pump. The a number of contractor was called to tender, and many contractor. Uh, my that time my GM told me that most of the contractor pre qualified the tender and say that they cannot drive the bar in. So my GM also asked me, he said, can you pre qualify in the tender as well with the tender? I told my GM, I said, no. I said, uh, I find a method how to install the power into this uh, high ground. Now, what I do is, because I, I brought in the ball power machine because we, we are going to do the ball power there. So I use the ball power plant to pre-ball. I, I, I pre-ball a hole along the retaining wall. Uh, I bore down to the required depth with the diameter slightly larger than the width of the ship pump and overlap it with 25%. After boring each part, I bore it set into the hole. I refill back into the stand. Now, it's not a bad, you, you just feel it back, it's not a very compact descent, so that you can easily drive in the bar. And instead of driven, using the hammer to drive the ship bar in, I use, I use a, a, a vibrator to vibrate the ship bar into the, the hole, okay, into the, this, this sand here. But by using this method, using the vibrator to vibrate in, I help to compact the sand and this will improve, reduce the active pressure at the behind of the retaining wall and increase the passive pressure in front. With this method, I secured the tender, I won a big bonus in cash and I was promoted from a junior engineer to become a project engineer. This is the second project, two years later. I met uh, one of the top geotechnical engineers in this country called Dr. Ting Wing Kui. Dr. Ting Wing Kui one day met up with me and said, Hong, can you find a way to help me to receive? You see, they want to build a building on top of uh, a hill slope. And below there, there is a few rows of houses there. 
and uh, the problem he, he is very worried that if he construct the conventional part into it there will be a frictional force just how I tell you about the frictional force will impose a load onto the slope and then the slope will collapse so for a few years they couldn't find a solution how to overcome this And the soil is a kidney hill formation as well. And it's very difficult to use a driven power. The, and the con consultant have drew up the use of raft foundation because he also worried if we put a raft foundation, that raft pressure will also endanger the slope to collapse. So he asked me to see whether we can install any other power that can prevent that. I I thought of a method. How to reduce the skin friction? What I have to do is to reduce the skin friction along here, so that it won't impose the load of the slope. I have to find a way how to reduce the ball path skin friction from here to here, so that it won't impose the load here. My concept of this uh, frictionless ball part is derived from two proven techniques and I form a composite part. First concept I derive from coating the steel edge part with vitreous slip layer commonly used for removing the negative skin friction. This is a very well proven method. You want to reduce the friction you coat the steel part, each part with uh, this uh, vitreous slip layer. And I fill the annular space between the ball hole and the steel part with the cement quality dust ground, which was used in forming the positive part. The positive part is loading a section down and fill the annular space with the cement quality uh, uh, dust guard. In fact, in the, in the this opposite part, they use a cement sand ground. But because I'm going to coat the pile with the bit, bit, bitumen, if I use sand, I worry the sand will penetrate into the bitumen layer. And that may cause a friction. And that may again introduce some friction into the slope. With the innovative solution for cutting off the skin friction, I managed to secure the parting contract on a cost plus basis. You see, normally we, we, we tender a job. Uh, you tender a job, normally you, you, you put in a percentage for your profit. But here, I'm fortunate because there's I'm the only contractor that provide the solution, so they negotiate him to apply a cost plus on the 30% profit. And upon awarding the contract, with the help of my technical director, Dr. Chan, I installed the instrumented test bar to verify the effectiveness of the composite bar. And the test revealed that I managed to remove more than 90% of the skin friction. Now, it told me that I got only five minutes. Uh, I just very quickly run through this. Tripod is my patented tri uh, power product. And this actually is to uh, replace some of the power, like for example, uh, timber power, with a low bearing power. And the uniqueness of this power is assuring the unit of this part. And this is a simple ma mathematics. Eh? For equilateral triangle, for the same cross-sectional area, it is, its perimeter is about 21% more than 
the square one, and 20, uh, 20, uh, 21.6 percent, and 21.09 bigger than the circular one, and 27.19 bigger than the, this uh, circular one. Uh, so this, the sharp friction of the power is a function of the perimeter of the power. It's based on your, you calculate the, it's based on, it's a function of the perimeter of the power. So if your perimeter is higher for the same cross-sectional area of concrete, then there's a saving. Say, for example, compared to the square power, there's a saving of 20 over percent in terms of cost. That's one advantage. The second advantage of tri power, you see, for other type of power, when you change the size, you have to change the set of mold. Three size, you have to use three different set of mold. Ten size, you can use ten set of mold. Whereas, for equilateral triangle, you just only have one set of mold. So the cost of manufacturing also is lower. Tripod is used widely in this country, in the West East and West Malaysia, uh, used for supporting building, bridges, power amendments, and uh, total power installed during my time equals to traveling once around the globe. And have been copied by a company and used it in Indonesia until now. And also they copied and use it in UK. They modify a bit. We got a pattern in UK by a company called Bashi. And but they call it Euro Pound. The IAP penetrometer is uh, another patented product of mine. Uh, I have no time to go into detail. Uh, basically, is in the early days. When you are doing more power, you have to rely on the experienced engineer or the supervisor to decide where is the founding level as you go down. Now, if you are boring to that, you are boring a big hole in the glass pocket. But if you are boring too shallow, your 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 founding too founding level is too shallow, the power might fail. It may cause the building to collapse. So this is. Uh, scientific method I derive is to you can lower the, the this IP domain in the borehole to check the where if, which level you want to found the power. This power is widely used for determine the found level of ball power, dive from wall or undersea underwater region. In fact I successfully use it for in Singapore, or one project in Singapore, to uh, for the this uh, two point six kilometer rectangular submarine cable tunnel from uh, Singapore to Pulau Seraya, but during the dredging, to where how deep you want to dredge the sea level so that you dredge all the soft soil out. So we use the IMP to make the uh, to to guide the dredging. Step ball power. Uh, is another invention of mine. I just uh, I mentioned that I did better this, and uh, because I applied in, into one project uh, for, I think the you you can you can take the, uh, my PowerPoint. You go back. You can read about it. The detail how 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 the thing is different and how you can save. Uh, in fact, this, this step ball power can save, uh, uh, in terms of uh, saving of power material and reduction in boring is about 30%. And in terms of uh, this uh, power length, it's one and a half times more than the normal ball power. And when you go a bit deeper, you will reduce the overall settlement of the building. Not only you are saving some cost, but 
he applied you know, in every soil. For example, if you have a very soft soil and suddenly you meet a hard rock, that is not applicable. But it worked very well in a uniform, stiff soil, like our Canadian formation. And I, in fact, uh, just now I mentioned I applied into a project. This, this is a project I use the uh, step or palm. I use this because I was asked by the consultant when he designed this building, he forget about the group sentiment of the total building sentiment. And he designed the par length is a bit too short. So he asked me whether, how can I come up with a method without extra cost to, so that the group we can reduce the, the group sentiment. So this is how the step of power was evolved. And in fact, we can increase the power length by about uh, 50, uh, one and a half times so that it solves this problem. And also, uh, in fact, not only at cost, we can reduce the cost by 30%. In 1981, in fact, this is uh, <laughs> not long after my uh, set up the company. Uh, I think many people in Malaysia will know about Diabomi. This is one of the first earlier high rise buildings. Uh, and our fourth Prime Minister, Dr. Mahade, is very keen, is very keen to speed up the process or the speed of construction in this country. We, we used to build a building of 20 stories in 8 years. So he wanted to take this as a trial case when he first became a PM. Parliament is 32 million ringgit. At the point, I thought 30 million is quite a lot of money. And he wanted the parliament to finish in 6 months time. I used some innovative design, I changed the design and uh, innovative managing the job and managed to com complete the job in four months, two months ahead of time. Now, these contracts specify that if you are late by one day, the fine is 80,000. If you are early by one day, the bonus is 60,000. The time my company have a payout capital of only 200,000. Not enough to last for three days. But I managed to work, complete this project in four months, two months ahead of time. And Dr. Mahade had me, the, the four prime minister, Dr. Mahade, had me the three million bonus. And that is my first call to go. Uh, just want to quickly say that science competition, creative mindset, and innovative help to achieve my success in business, in academic side, and in social field. Managed to grow the company from 200,000 to multi million dollars and list the company after three years' operation. And it is the first company, construction company, listed in Kuala Lumpur Stock Exchange. A few years later, just as I mentioned just now, I expand the company to overseas and I control four public companies. From 1989 to 2000, 16 past recipient of AEM award for contribution to the engineering profession in Malaysia. Over the last 21 years, I am still the youngest to receive this award. I was the first batch. I was the first batch elected as a fellow of AS Academy of Science Malaysia and now I'm a senior fellow of Academy of Science Malaysia. I was the first person from private sector to be appointed as a chairman of National Social Security Organization 
In fact, his, his name is Dr. Mahathir, the former Prime Minister. When he saw me retired out, after I joined my retirement for one year, he called me to his office and said, can you come and use your innovative uh, way, help me to reorganize and reform this social organization. In fact, I went in for eight years, I managed to grow the fund from 8 billion to 16 billion. I managed to reduce the accident rate of the workers from 80 over thousand per year to 54,000 per year. Now, in 2013, I went with uh, Professor Lee, the chairman of organizing for uh, committee for uh, ASC. We, we set up a workshop to interact with the uh, this, uh, manufacturers in Ipoh, I think, also in Ipoh. Is it Ipoh or Penang? Penang, yeah, in Penang, yeah. During the tea time, uh, one of the gentlemen, Chu Kiming, came to me. We're having, I'm having tea with the property. He came to us and said, Hong, Mr. Hong, I must thank you very much. Because, he said, I attended one of your talk, and your talk have inspired to what I am today. These are some of his. Uh, in fact, he set up his company in 1998 and turned public in 2004, also very fast. And today, his company's market cap is about 2 billion ringgit. His business is machine vision and automation. And these are some of his uh, patented products. I spoken to him, I said, can I quote him in some I talk to the student to him, so that the student may be inspired as well. So this is, I asked uh, for me to talk to him and he replied back in an email and said, Dear Professor Lee, Dr. Hong's talk at Chung High School is one of the talks that I will never forget and it planted a seed into my heart that I will need to study hard so that one day I can be as successful as him as an engineer and entrepreneur. It's my great honor to be mentioned in Dr. Hong's talk in future. So today I mention him again. Dear Dr. Hong, my sincere appreciation to you for inspiring my life and lead me to what I am today. Thank you. I wish that, or I hope that some of you may also be inspired by the talk over the last two and a half days, and one of you be as successful as Mr. Chu King Wing or some of the lecturers you've met over the last two days. Thank you very much.